Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of The Raven Remastered. I played it on the Xbox One, it's also available on the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC. So let's start with the story. You play as Constable Zellner, you're just kind of riding on a train. I'm not really sure if they say where he's going, but it turns out that there's more going on on this train than... Well, you originally thought. The constable runs into Inspector Legrand, who is a pretty famous guy for having shot and killed the original Raven. That becomes kind of important when you find out that there is a new Raven running around stealing some gems, and he's pretty violent. He's actually seriously injured a guy. He's planting bombs. He's not afraid to commit a murder or two. So obviously, you get wrapped up in this big adventure, and... Honestly, I've got to say, I really enjoyed the story of this game. I thought it was really cool. I liked the storytelling for the most part. So overall, I got to say, I enjoyed that, which is important because this is very much one of those interactive narratives kind of adventure style games, if you know what I mean. Let's get into the audio. As for the music, I enjoy the music in this game. I think it works well with this more old-timey era that they're in. Unfortunately, this game is definitely missing a good amount of sound effects. What sound effects are there are good, but there are definitely times where there are sound effects missing and you're just kind of confused by it. But unfortunately, the voice acting, while not necessarily terrible, is also not exactly great. It's just kind of somewhere in between. It's not fully discount, but it's also not like that really high-end voice work. So it leaves something to be desired, especially in a game that's so driven by narrative. Let's get into gameplay and mechanics and whatnot. And this is very much an interactive narrative or what people would call a walking simulator. It's kind of like a point-and-click adventure without the point-and-click part. One thing that I really liked, and it adds replay value to the game, is that there's a scoring system for each chapter based on how many hints you use, how long it takes you. You can also do a thing that will highlight any object you can interact with in an um, area. And if you use hints, if you use that ability, it will detract points. So obviously you get more points if you don't do that. Unfortunately, however, this game has some issues in that its tutorial gives you basically half of what you need to know. The longer I played the game, the more I was introduced to new things that they didn't exactly tell you what you were trying to do or how to do them. They were simple enough to figure out, but at first you're sitting there going, wait, what is this? So that was a little frustrating, but I did enjoy the fact that you wander about, you find stuff to use. You may not necessarily know when or what you'll use it for, but it is very important to go around and try and find anything you can use. But obviously your goal is to investigate and solve puzzles, and it does all right with all of that, but it does run into issues. Also, unfortunately, this game does not run as well as you'd expect it to. It crashed on me several times in loading screens. I was rewarded with just a black screen of nothingness for extended periods of time until I quit out of the entire game and restarted it. Let's get into the controls. Now, this is where the game really just suffers. Firstly, there's no way to move faster than a not even brisk walk. It's barely meandering, it's slow, and it's kind of obnoxious. But on top of that, there are times where you're trying to face a certain direction to interact with something and your character just won't fucking do it. It's obnoxious. It's kind of awful. Another maybe small complaint, but it is obnoxious because it's such a habit, is pressing something like the B button or the circle button to exit menus. That is not in this game. You have to press the exact same button you press to get into the menu, and it's just a weird habit. A lot of the menus don't work as well as I would like. Just manipulating them, especially things like manipulating your notebook, it doesn't work the way it should. It's kind of awkward. There's also a problem that's not exactly controls, but it really screws with you when you are controlling your character, and that is if you walk too close to a wall, your character will get stuck. And I don't mean like you're walking perpendicular into a wall. Obviously, your character is going to get stuck if you're walking directly into a wall. I mean, if you're walking parallel alongside a wall and you get too close to it, your character gets stuck. It's really, really frustrating. Because you're trying to maneuver an already clunky controlled character around a lot of narrow hallways, it gets obnoxious just getting where you need to go. Then lastly, let's get into the visuals and graphics. I like the art style of this game. I think that is really cool. I love the colors in this game. I like how bright it is. But 
I've got to say, because this really gets distracting, the character animations are awful. Just awful. They're so stiff and wooden and just look wildly unnatural. They look shitty. The reason I bring it up is because it's just so hard to associate with this game when they move in such a stiff manner. They don't seem natural. So it's hard to get into the story when everything is so fake and wooden feeling. It strips away from what is essentially the performance, which is incredibly important in a game like this when it's driven by the narrative, it's driven by these characters. So when the animation is such shit, it's just, it's difficult to get into. So to wrap this up, I like the story of the Raven. I will say there are definitely some issues with the storytelling. It's not terrible, and I did enjoy it. But there are other issues with the gameplay where they just don't explain things to you. They're just like, here's a new mechanic that you may never use again, and we're not going to tell you how it works. But also there are just other things that take away from it and really degrade the quality of the game, like the audio issues, like the visual issues. It's just unfortunate because I would have really enjoyed the story otherwise. Honestly, I gotta say, it's not worth the time or money. Overall, The Raven Remastered is a skip, which is unfortunate because I generally love this style of game. Okay, so in the comments below, why don't you tell me what your favorite mystery game is? God, right now, the only mystery game is coming to mind. Neither one of them is a good game. Why? And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share, subscribe. Have a good one.